السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين افتح علينا افتح العارفين يسر لنا يا الله Today insha'Allah our hadith will be about giving it's giving zakah sadaqa charity and also about the other type of giving so let's start bismillah an abi hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال الله تعالى أنفق يا ابن آدم أنفق عليك So Abu Hurairah reported that Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has said if you spend son of Adam I shall spend on you There are several ayahs in the Holy Quran that orders order people to spend of their wealth and give the poor. And uh, in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 110, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ, uh, إن الله بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ um, Establish prayer and give zakah. And whatever good you put forward for yourselves, you will find it with Allah. And indeed, Allah of what you do is seeing. So Allah <clears throat> subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, ordered people to give, to, to pay zakah, to, to pay charity, to help others who are in need, to help those who are less fortunate. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered this type of helping each other, uh, if you look at the society, then you will find that it's a strong society. The rich takes care of the poor. The one who possesses gives those who don't have. So establishing the prayer is not enough. We should always give sadaqah. And in, on, on the basics of Islam, so they go together, establishing prayer, performing the prayer, and giving zakah, giving charity. And we, we always say it in uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ So we, Ya Allah, we worship you. You ordered to do something and we will follow. So your order, you ordered us to spend and we will. So it's not only the wealthy people who, who give and who help, poor people also help each other. I myself know a lady who, who is less fortunate. She, she comes to houses. She helps the lady of the house to, uh, with her uh, housework and uh, everything. And later on, I heard about this, this woman that she 
pays charity for others who are less fortunate for her than her. She also has orphans help also. She pays for orphans. So imagine this amount of money that she receives from, from, from her work during the day. She gets a, a, a good amount of it just to help those who are less fortunate than her. And this is what it really means. So Allah ordered us to, to give people, to pay sadaqah, to pay charity, to pay zakah. So everyone helps another uh, other people the way that they can do it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who are conscious of Allah, this is in uh, the uh, ayah before, هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who are conscious of Allah, those who believe in the unseen, what do they do? So they believe in the unseen, they establish prayer, and they spend out of what we have provided for them. And the ayahs goes on and on and on about giving charities. So some people would, would say, oh, if I give, then my, uh, my wealth might be uh, off, uh, it, will, uh, it will lessen and I will not, I will not be able to, to collect more and more. So what do we what do we say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these people in Surah Al Isra in Ayat 100 when he said, Say if you possessed the dispositories of the mercy of my Lord, then you would withhold out of fear of spending. And ever has man been stingy? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner and not the humans. Because some people would, would be stingy. They would not want to give because they are afraid that this would lessen their fortune. This would lessen their, their wealth. But in, if, if, we, if we look at it, actually, so how, how, does it, how does it go? Now remember that whatever you have will end. Whatever you have will end. But whatever Allah has is everlasting. So Aisha, radiallahu anha, one day, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had slaughtered a sheep and distributed major portions of its meat. So Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, سأل عائشة رضي الله عنها ما بقي منها قالت ما بقي منها إلا كتفها قال بقي كلها غير كتفها So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had slaughtered a sheep and 
he distributed, as I mentioned, major portions of its meat. Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asked Aisha, uh, what is left? What is left of the meat? And Aisha replied, she said, nothing except the shoulder. So they, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, distributed everything, he gave uh, everything except the shoulder. But Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, hearing what Aisha said, uh, he, he, he looked at her and he said to her, all of it is left except its shoulder. So all of it is left with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it is left with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shoulder that was left is, is going to be eaten and that's it. So now we might say, okay, so who to give charity, who to give sadaqah, who to give zakah to? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made it so clear in the Quran. And he said in Surah At-Tawbah in Ayah 60, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ فَرِيضَةً مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ so charity expenditures are only for the poor for, and for the needy and for those employed to collect zakah and for bringing hearts together. And this is for Islam and for fearing captives or slaves. For, for freeing captives or slaves, and for those in debt, and for the cause of Allah, and for the standard traveler, for the stranded traveler, an obligation imposed by Allah. And Allah is knowing and wise. So these are the charity expenditures, the poor. They don't have money. And the needy. So what's the difference between the poor and the needy? One of them is less fortunate than the other. They, 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 the poor does not have anything. The needy has a little bit, but it's not enough for him. And for those employed to collect the zakah. So these are the people who work uh, and they go, this is how it was. They, they, they used to go from uh, uh, one place to another to collect the zakah. So those people who do this job, if they are poor, we have to give them. And uh, sometimes you pay it for bringing hearts together for Islam. So you know that they are in need. And they never knew about Islam before. When you give them and you tell them this is of the zakah, then this will capture their hearts, that this is a generous religion. Um, so wafi riqab is for you can he can pay zakah to free captives or to free slaves. So these are wafi riqabi wal mina, those who are in debt. You can pay your zakah to someone who is in debt who cannot get uh, who cannot pay back the person who gave him the money. You can do that. You can help those people. Wafi sabili la. And for the cause of Allah, Wabni Sabil. So Ibn Sabil is the traveler. He might be rich, but 
he lost his money. So now he is without money. And this is called, this person is called Ibn Sabil. And you can give your sadaqah, you can give your zakat to that person to help him. So what is all of this? These, these uh, charity expenditures, this is an obligation from Allah. Faridatan min Allah. Wallahu alimun hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowing. He knows everything. He knows who has, he knows who deserves. He is the wise. He wants people to help each other. He wants strong communities, strong societies. Sometimes people might be in need, but they do not show it. And Allah mentioned those, this part of people, this type of people in Surah Al-Baqarah in Ayah 273 when he said, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ <laughs> So charity is for the poor who have been restricted for the cause of Allah. Unable to move about in the land. Like Sometimes if person is poor in his country, then uh, he might go to another country to seek some, uh, uh, to work and get more money than he can get in his country. But these people here, they are unable to move about in the land. So an ignorant person would think them self-sufficient because of their restraint. They would not, they would not show that they are poor. But you will know them by the characteristic sign. By their characteristic sign, you will know those people. They do not ask people for uh, persistently, or they do not ask at all. They feel it shameful to ask people for help so these are the type of people that do not show they are in need but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the this ayah by saying and whatever you spend of good indeed allah is knowing of it So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts mercy in the hearts of people. And with this mercy, we find people taking care of each other. And I'm going to tell you a true story reported by someone who does not want his name to be mentioned. He said, Once I was in need uh, for money, and I had only $10 remaining from the monthly salary. Only $10. And though it was not the end of the month yet, but this is all I had. And I kept on thinking how to get money how to get money, but I did not find any solution. And suddenly I remembered the Hadith Qudsi, the one that we started our uh, session today with, where Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, narrated that, O son of Adam, spend and I will spend on you. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. <clears throat> And this is a Sahih uh, Bukhari Hadith. 
So I said to myself, I had only this way to resort to. That's the only way. So I quickly went to a charitable institution and donated all that I had, the $10. Now, this person has nothing. But he says, I was certain that Allah would compensate me with what's better. So look at this strong belief in Allah, strong tawakkul on Allah. So he said, I spent the night with a tranquil soul and a peaceful mind. And in the morning, I went to my work with feelings of happiness and comfort. So he said, I sat on the chair and started to check some papers on my desk in order to achieve some work. In a short period thereafter, the telephone rang and it was a call from the treasurer who said, come in, come quickly in order to receive your bonus. And this person says, I astonishingly said, what bonus do you mean? And he said, a bonus for achieving excellent work. Come quickly and don't be late. So he says, I put the receiver and I sat on my chair with a great joy. And I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward me in the day after, just as he compensated me in this world. So I then went to receive the uh, bonus and it was more than $200. Immediately, immediately, this person had in mind that I depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the fruit of giving in charity. And not only giving in charity, but also relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah only and dispensing with what people have. So just depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in addition to the award, uh, to the reward, to the reward of the hereafter, spending money for the sake of Allah has good consequences in this worldly life, including blessings uh, in one's age, uh, blessings in sustenance, righteousness of the offspring, and protection from calamities. And this reminds us of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says, Dawu mardakum bisadaqa. So, heal your sick people, sick loved ones with giving charity. And again, I'm going to tell you a story. This is a family I really know. And I know this family well. This family is very well off. And the aunt, suddenly they discovered that she has cancer. And her brother went to one of the uh, uh, friends of Allah, one of the shiuch, and he said to him, see, this, this uh, my, my sister has cancer and I don't know what to do. He said, I will not tell you what to do medically, but I will tell you something that if you do, Allah has promised that there will be, that there will be uh, amazing consequences. So give and heal your 
uh, loved sick ones by giving lots of charity. So he said, okay, so what do we do? He said, you went to so many hospitals, to so many doctors, and they all told you that she has this uh, period of life, this few months to live, give sadaqah. And give it with uh, real belief that Allah will hear her, heal her. He said, okay, so what do we do? What do I give? He said, just take a big amount of your wealth. And remember, those people are, are wealthy people. So take big amount of your uh, uh, wealth and give it in charity to one person who is in need. And they did. And one month later, this uh, woman had to go back to see her doctors. And they did a CT scan. And now they looked at her and they said, what did you do? Where did you get your uh, remedy? What, what, what happened? How did you heal yourself? And she was cancer free. They promised her to live a, a few months and she lived over 20 years. And this is the blessings of giving. This is a promise and there will be a consequence for that promise. So just give. And uh, so many stories to, uh, to, to show the, the importance of giving and uh, to, to, to be a true giver. So we will learn from, from those stories, but I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, stop with these two, two examples here. Okay, now, so spend for the sake of Allah. And always remember, you will find the reward on the day of judgment. And you will be highly rewarded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 261, مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم So the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah for the sake of Allah is like a seed, a seed of grain which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills. And Allah is all encompassing of, and Allah is knowing. He knows. If you spend like a speck amount, he knows of it. And he will reward you for that. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, tamra. So try to avoid hellfire even with a piece of date. You see the, the, the date uh, we eat? Even a piece of it, if you give it for the sake of Allah, then that will be uh, saved for you till the day after. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, he gives, uh, he gives abundantly. So you see, the like of uh, spending for the sake of Allah is like a seed 
a seed of grain when you when you plant it then it will give spikes and each spike will have grains in it so imagine the the reward that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given has promised to give on the day of judgment and we know that so if Allah rewards day and night, nothing would lessen from what he owns. When you, when you help someone, then Allah would say, Allah would say you are showing generosity to my slaves, to my creatures, to my people, then on the day of judgment, I will show you the real generosity. Allah is the real generous, who highly rewards, who multiply the rewards. So be generous. Be generous for whatever you spend on yourself is only for your temporary sustenance. While whatever you spend in the way of Allah is an investment in your future for which Allah will, for which will provide everlasting sustenance. So Allah will keep it for you until the day of judgment. Whatever you spend in this dunya is okay, is gone. Is gone if you spend it on food, on uh, clothing, uh, houses, cars. You can enjoy, of course, your wealth. Your wealth, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves to see, to see the blessings that He has given you. To love you, He He loves to see that you are enjoying the blessings. But Always remember that what you give for his sake is an everlasting sustenance. So invest, invest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the highest reward. If you know that this if you buy this stock it will it will give you a return of uh, uh, 200% and uh, uh, you you will you will definitely be rich and then you will buy it and this is a promise from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will multiply all that you invest with him all that you give for his sake so Sadaqa or charity, of course, is not compulsory. What is obligatory, however, is zakat. And zakat is a fixed percentage of your halal, of your lawful savings, if they meet the conditions of Pay of uh, uh, giving zakah. So, this percentage that you give is meant to purify your wealth and increase your wealth. So, when you recognize the needs of those who are less fortunate, then you are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paying zakah. And Allah will highly reward you. So the very meaning of the term zakah signifies purification. It signifies multiplying of your wealth. Because what you give for the sake of Allah will be highly rewarded. It will purify your money it will purify your zakah your your wealth and it will be highly rewarded and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah at-tawbah ayah 103 khuz min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim biha 
So of their wealth, take alms to purify and sac uh, sanctify them. And in Surah Al-Layl, he talks about um, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى He that spends his positions on others so that he might grow in pure, purity. وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى And not giving for anyone who has done him a favor to be rewarded. He gives why? إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى But only seeking the countenance of his Lord Most High. So he spends only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is going to be satisfied. Allah will highly reward him. So this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you spend will be highly rewarded. Now, let's stop on one one point. So is spending for the sake of Allah just spending money? Of course, zakat is spending money. But what about sadaqah? Sadaqah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqah. You're smiling for your for your brother is a sadaq. So there are different ways of paying sadaq. Sometimes people say, I don't have any money to give. We need money and we need people to give us money. But still, they can pay sadaq. They can have good manners, they can help each other, they can do, they can spend emotionally. They can, so spending is not only by money and someone can achieve sadaqah by spending of their time. Sometimes people need help. And uh, sometimes you do voluntary work just to help people. So you are taking some, some of your time just to give for people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spending also can be spending knowledge. And you can teach. You know something, you can teach it. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and teach it. So, the best surah to teach people, especially who, who are new in Islam, is Al-Fatiha. Why? First of all, uh, as we mentioned earlier in previous sessions, that Al-Fatiha is a summary for the whole Quran. Secondly, it is the surah that is repeated in each rak'ah that we pray. So if you teach someone who is new to Islam how to read the Fatiha, imagine the reward that you would get whenever he, this person prays. So this is spending knowledge. And of course, there is spending emotionally. And you spend emotionally by showing love, by taking care of others, by showing uh, and practicing good manners. So 
there are so many ways of spending, of giving sadaqah. So when you, when a mom shows love to her family, she takes care of her children, she takes care of her home, she takes care of her parents, she takes care of her in-laws, she takes care of all around her, then this is sadaqa. And especially when she does that with the intention that I'm doing it, Ya Allah, for your sake. I'm not waiting for anyone to reward me. I'm not waiting for anyone to say thank you. I'm doing it only for your sake. I know that I will be rewarded in the day after. I know that if no one sees what I'm doing, then you, Allah, see whatever I'm doing. So showing love in this way is a type of worship if it is connected with a good intention. Also taking care of others. When you take care of the elderly, when you take care of your parents, when you take care of a sick person, when you take care of your neighbors, then again, this is spending emotionally. This is spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you spend, do it with the intention that I want you to be pleased, Ya Allah. I want to please you, Ya Arham al -Rahimin. You have given us mercy and you put mercy in our hearts. We want to use this mercy. We want to, we want to show this mercy to others. Because the same way that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his uh, generous uh, slaves, you are showing generosity to others, I will show you the real generosity on the day of judgment. You are showing mercy to others, I will show you the real mercy on the day of judgment. And we all need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all need the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all need the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment when there is no shade except his shade. So we need you, Ya Allah. We want you to guide us to whatever pleases you. And we want you to connect our heart with the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is our model. We want to follow his steps. We want to be guided with, with the light of the Quran. We want, we want to read the Quran, understand the Quran, and apply the Quran in our lives. So we ask you, Ya Allah, to help us along this journey that we are all taking to you. We, are, we know that we are all coming back to you to be in front of you. And we want to be winners on that day, Ya Allah. We want you to help us during that day, Ya Allah. We want you to show us your mercy, Ya Arham al -Rahimin. We want you to show us your generosity on that day, Ya Allah. So we ask for your guidance. We ask that you protect us. You protect our children. You protect uh, uh, all the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And until we meet next week, inshallah, we, we send our best salam, our best salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum 
ورحمة الله وبركاته